was my idol. Mozart. I can't think of a time when I didn't know his name. I was still playing childish games when he was playing music for kings and emperors, even the Pope in Rome. I admit I was jealous when I heard the tales they told about him. Not of the brilliant little prodigy, but of his father, who had taught him everything. My father he did not care for music. When I told him how I wished I could be like Mozart, he would say, Why? Do you want to be a trained monkey? Would you like me to drag you around Europe doing tricks like a circus freak? <laughs> How could I tell him what music meant to me? While my father prayed earnestly to God to protect commerce, I would offer up secretly proudest prayer a boy could think of. Lord, make me a great composer. Let me celebrate your glory through music and be celebrated myself. Make me famous through the world, dear God. Make me immortal. After I die, let people speak my name forever with love for what I wrote. In return, I will give you my chastity, my industry, my deepest humility, every hour of my life. Amen. And do you know what happened? A miracle. I knew God had arranged it all. That was obvious. One, one minute I was a frustrated boy in an obscure little town. The next I was here in Vienna, city of musicians and Emperor Joseph, the musical king. In a few years, I was his court composer. Isn't that incredible? Night after night, I sat right next to the Emperor of Austria, playing duets with him correcting the royal sight reading. Actually, the man had no ear at all. But what did it matter? He adored my music. Tell me, if you had been me, wouldn't you have thought God had accepted your vow? And believe me, I honored it. I was a model of virtue. I kept my hands off women. I worked hours every day teaching students, many of them for free, sitting on endless committees to help poor musicians. Work and work and work. That was all my life. And it was wonderful. Everybody liked me. I liked myself. Till he came. He came 